Grey Lake Swimmers is a band, but it's also really a man named Tony Decker, who currently resides in the Niagara region of Ontario. Decker began playing as Grey Lake Swimmers 15 years ago and has seen a loosely outfitted art project with revolving members become one of Canada's most respected and cherished enigmatic folk and rock outfits. Their impressively distinctive seven albums include 2018's The Waves, The Wake, which is out now via Network Records, and found Decker opting not to compose any songs on acoustic guitar, instead employing a range of unique instrumentation and vocal ideas to ostensibly reimagine what Great Lake Swimmers might sound like. A day after getting back from an extensive American tour, Tony drove to Guelph's CFRU studios to meet me for a talk about the waves, the wake, being a Canadian in America during its 2018 midterm elections, parenthood and artistic timelines, what's next for Great Lake Swimmers, and much more. With the support of listeners like you, who subscribe to this podcast and spread the word about it, and make flexible monthly pledges at patreon.com slash Control. Plus, in-kind support from CFRU 93.3 FM, Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, and Planet Bean Coffee in Guelph, and Granddad's Donuts in Hamilton. This is the 443rd episode of Creative Control, featuring the gifted musical visionary Tony Decker of Great Lake Swimmers, with your host, me, Vish Khanna. Hi, Tony. How's it going? Good. Good. How are you? <laughs> Pretty well. Welcome to uh, Guelph and Thank CFRU. You. Very nice to be here. Have you been here before? I don't think I've been here before. I've been, I was just trying, or at least it's been a very long time if I have been here before yeah. at, at CFRU. Yeah. Like I mean, specifically yeah. at CFRU. You, yeah. You're a been frequent. Guelph many, many times. Many times. But. And uh, yeah, I just couldn't recall if you might have done something here before. Uh, I mean, you've done lots of radio stuff. Yeah. Big, small levels. All over the map. All over the map. Yeah. Speaking of all over the map, thank you for coming in. You just got back from tour, right? Yeah, we, we just got back from uh, six weeks in the States. We did Six weeks. Yeah. That's, I mean, I used to say this all the time to you. You are a road hog. You like the <laughs> tour. You tour hard when you tour. Well, it's to me, it's part of the whole deal. We we have a good little crew going on the road and, and uh, you know, it's a it's a it's a it's an important part of the of the equation. It's a good way to keep the conversation going. Mm, for mm-hmm. the rec- you know the conversation starts when you release a record, and it continues when you sort of share it with people out there. That's true. Um, and uh, yeah, it's been a, we had a good run. It's been a good run. Beyond uh, interviews like this one, when you say you're you're engaging in a conversation with people, do you often engage with fans? about maybe the meaning behind your work or do they ask you questions like that the way maybe a, a journalist might? Like, do you end up in those kinds of conversations with anyone? Uh, occasionally. You do? Yeah. Because, okay. um, I mean, often the, the exchange is, great show, thank you for coming. You know, those are the kinds of the things, but do people are like, By, while I have you here, can I ask you about <laughs> this song or this album? Do they ever, does that come up? It does, yeah, it does, yeah. And the thing... One of the things that I, I really like about that is that to me the highest compliment or the highest sort of the best the best sort of exchange I think to me is when someone connects with with you or with the music or they come to the show and they say this this song was very important to me for this reason yeah and it's and it's like you know it could be any number of things but it's like it's it's important to like the fabric of their lives yeah you know like that's that's the real the beauty of it I think yeah you know of of uh, and it's not like an ego thing or anything like that mm-hmm. at all. It's just that, like, that's a good reason for making music is f- for it to be part of the fabric of someone's life. Yeah. You know? No, that's that's a fair point to make. Yeah. I mean, you say six weeks in the States, uh, you drove back from Indianapolis, did you say? 
which is like last Yesterday, night. Yesterday, yeah. So as we're speaking, it's just past uh, the midterm election in, in America. You were there throughout the height of it, I guess. You were there, right? You were most definitely. Most definitely. Yeah. And yeah. what was that like? Because I've, I've toured uh, during a, I toured once uh, in the States during a presidential election during the uh, Al Gore, George W. Bush election in 2000. And I noticed like a palpable, profound sort of, difference in the atmosphere from state to state, city to city. Did you notice that? Did you talk to people about what was going on? A little bit, yeah. But I mean, people are very um, on edge and people are very alarmed. And, uh, you know, in general, and especially the people that we came into contact with. Sure. But, I mean, going through middle, the middle, the middle of America too, it's like, it's a, it's a different, it seems like a different place yeah. um, than, than other parts of the country. It's a big country. So there's a lot of different people and a lot of different viewpoints. Um, there's a lot of uh, really good and forward thinking and, and uh, there's a lot of, let me, I'm trying to be diplomatic about this, <laughs> but there's a lot of opposing viewpoints. Sure. Um, and uh, my, my suspicion is that um, potentially America is not as, as divided as we think it is. I think the, I think it's divided amongst the people that, that bothered voting, you know, which oh, is, I see what which you're is, I mean, I think it's generous to say that half of the, of the country voted. I think it was a yeah. record, from what I understand, it was like over 100 million people voted in I, that I, I guess I'm talking about, like, not the midterms. Oh, but like, sure, yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Other I mean, elections. That's, but I, I, that's I think fair. there was, a, you know, a, a very good turnout for this one, so. Do yeah. you do you have, because um, there's, I have a thing, I'm a, I know a little bit about history, I read about history, and when I'm in certain states uh, in America, I get a little, my, you know, I'm, I'm a little more, um, I don't know, not paranoid, just to, like I'm a little like, oh, I'm in Mississippi. Mm-hmm. The history of this state is weird. Do mm-hmm. you, did you or your crew have that like, oh man, we're going to this red state or this blue state or whatever? Like, do you, do you think about that when you're traveling in the States? Um, it's this mythical place in some ways with so much history. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. I think that where like our, our sort of like place in that is, is, um, potentially in these little oases you know where, where we're where we're in a where we're around creative people or around people in the arts or you know what i mean people that yeah. sort of know what to expect from our show and bubble the bubble the bubble yeah in a weird of. way yeah right? in yeah. a weird way um so i think it's definitely on our minds and especially coming into like while we were out like the 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 shooting happened in pittsburgh oh yeah which right. was I mean, it's just devastating to hear stuff like that. And like, that's the stuff that we were really absorbing was kind of like, that's all happening as we're there. Yeah. Um, this now these, uh, we, we had, we were literally just in California and had we been a couple of weeks later, we wouldn't have been able to, to drive right. to our show because right. of the wildfires right. and because of it's basically on fire right now. And, and, you know, in the larger, the larger issue there is climate change and we're just, we're right at the tipping point and there's just, you know, the time for action is is now and like that's that's kind of more on the forefront of my mind as well yeah you know yeah well um, i i want to congratulate you this might be a nice segue into this new record uh the the waves the wake because i feel like some of these um concerns i suppose that you've expressed are here there's i i feel like throughout there's the sense that something is changing or needs to change um there's a there's I think very um, obvious references to such things, like the song uh, Visions of a Different World in Unmaking the Bed, which I believe the title of the album comes from. Mm-hmm. There's this sense of, you know, rising, falling. Like it's just things kind of moving, but where are they moving? And that uncertainty. Have I captured that on some level? Is that maybe where you were coming from, that uncertainty? Yeah, I, th- I think so. I mean, the wave, I liked the words, the waves and the wake together because they're it, like the waves kind of represented kind of like pu- a push towards the future and the wake was meant to be like the, you know, the the trail behind a boat in the water, yeah. like the past, like the the, you know, the sort of the, the, the trail behind you and kind of trying to find the, the middle, like trying to find the center in that and trying to find the balance in that and, and sort of, yeah, navigating that. Um, sort of sense of what's to come and what's behind, I guess. Yeah, and I couldn't help but think of the wake as uh, I know what you were what you're referring to here, and there's a lot of water imagery I feel like on this on this record. But the wake 
in this time of being woke. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it kind of spoke to me too. Absolutely, like and awareness. That's, and that's the other meaning, and that's why I like those words together because they're very like they're charged words, you know, like yeah. they're very kind of like they're they're powerful words together, and and yeah, absolutely, and waves too. I mean, it can can work on a few different levels too. Yeah, yeah. that I started thinking about, um, you know, when when I was thinking about a title for the album, so. Yeah. So um, you 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 had these lyrics already made. Like this, like I say, this the title is is pulled from the song ostensibly. Mm-hmm. Is that what happened? Yeah. Well, I started noticing like all the waves in different songs too, and like there was like all these other things. Like there, it's really like this contained group of songs. You know, yeah. that's like a little bit kind of like references each other, and then I started noticing repeating words coming up, and and so it, it kind of made sense on that level, I guess. Were know? they written in a batch per se? They were. Yeah. Yeah. So I often think of this, and some writers have done a more... Ob- I, I often think of Gord Downey, because Gord Downey would do this on every Tragically Hip record, I think. I, I really think it's every single one, which I hadn't noticed tw- until the end of the band, where every album seems to have a song that echoes another song, a phrase, a lyric, an idea. And uh, I know that I feel like he was writing in a batch, Mm-hmm. And then the things were swimming around in there, and some of them made sense in different contexts. Mm-hmm. Are you saying that's unusual? Is that unusual for you to notice a re- repetition of idea, repetition of intent, maybe? I, I guess so. I, I just feel like, I guess one way to describe it is that, like, musically, I was really trying to, like, reach a little further, I think. And, like, in the lyrics, too, I was, I was, I was, um, uh, I was trying to, to, to dive a little deeper, you know, and it took me a lot longer, but. I see. But um, but I think it was, you know, um, it was rewarding to do that at the same time. Yes. Dive a little deeper. You went ocean on me again. Yeah. <laughs> There's a water thing going on, and I, I appreciate that. Oh, it's, it's a lake thing. It's okay. <laughs> lake, ocean, yeah, whatever it is. So you, you say musically you were trying to transcend maybe something you've done before. Fans will notice that this is a, a record that isn't um, uh, guitar-based so to speak. Um, correct me if I'm, wrong, if I'm wrong, but I believe some of the instrumentation is harp, lute, pipe organ, woodwinds. Uh, what else do you got going on on there? Uh, there's some marimbas happening marimbas. on some of the tracks. Yeah. Uh, did you say pipe organ? There I was did. One from the, there was that one that we recorded in the church. and Banjo, piano, some guitar. Yeah, some guitar. I mean, I fought hard to not have any acoustic guitar on it. but uh, So what, the, what, what was going on there? You wanted to, you felt like you needed to go aim a bit higher, so to speak, I guess, but which is interesting because I feel like you've always had a, a an ear for you know lush instrumentation and or sort of or yeah I I know it's a, maybe a cliche. There's an orchestral uh, movement to your folk music, if I may say. I hope that doesn't offend you. No, not at all. No. <laughs> you've done no. interesting things with I think kind of conventional instrumentation, but this is you. I believe, if I understand things correctly, you didn't even compose with an acoustic guitar for this, right? No, some of them, well, some of them were, you know, on acoustic guitar and then we, you know, worked on a, out an arrangement based on the on the guitar part and some of them were just on other instruments okay. and some of them were, you know, um, like there's that one that's a cappella too, which I didn't yeah. think really needed anything else. But I feel like we had like brought like as as a group of people, like, I mean, first of all, like the 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 sort of the the band or the lineup on the albums is different every on every album. It has been for yeah, all seven albums, but I feel like with this this sort of group of people that we had, we had brought our kind of sound to a certain point, and 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 I wanted to do something different than sort of another folk rock record, which would have been fine too, I think. But you know. I, I to me it was like okay we need to do something different and I didn't just want to rely on like okay this is five people playing guitar bass and drums you know add something else you know do you have a sense of where that impulse to do something different for this record maybe stems from I mean you uh, I forgot to also say congratulations this is your 15th anniversary as great like oh, yeah. right yeah totally yeah so you've hit this yeah. milestone I don't know how conscious you were of it when you were conceiving of this or whether they the two crossed over but I mean I can I can objectively imagine that if you've been doing something in a similar way for that long, you might want to shake things up. I will say also, I think you've always shaken things up. Every record, you seem to find a, a different environment, you know, where there's a, a, a maybe a connection to nature or natural reverb or what have you. You've used all sorts of venues and churches, silos, whatever. I, I can't go through the, the litany of things. Yeah, yeah. But you are uh, very fascinated by... 
uh, new uh, environments, new uh, atmospheres for your work, um, which I think is telling. I mean, you've used rooms as instruments in themselves um, and approaches to songwriting. So this is not surprising to me that mm-hmm. you would be like, I need to depart again. I need to try something different. But having said all that, back to my question, do you know or have a sense of what your impulse was to, to go this route in, in particular? I don't know. I, I just, I feel like I was just turning a corner in, in like, in, in life, you know what I mean too? <laughs> like it, it's like, but, but also musically, I just felt like, I really feel like with this one, like it's like, I feel I'm excited for the next thing because I, I sort of already know what I want to do. And I, and I think that there's so much room to go further and maybe, you know, f- further out there and, and, and really get into like, you know, quite different instrumentation. This, this whole like thing was like, in the writing, in the music, it just sort of opened up a lot of avenues for me for, you know, just thinking and also in musical collaboration. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. Is just, it, is there it, was just something different about this one. I, and I, I don't know if it's just where I am in my life, but it was like just this, they just feel like this light went on and, and I'm, you know, it just sort of it kind of, I feel like it took me a while to get to that place, but. You know. Do, I guess I, I'm, I may be asking you something. Uh, I'm asking you to home in on something specific about about a, a thing that seems to have happened maybe organically like I, I i know that word comes up a lot and um on some level i feel like it's appropriate sometimes i think it's a cop out of uh, uh like when i use it i'm like am i just saying i don't know why something happened uh, it just happened um mm-hmm. but that's sort of what you're saying like this was yeah it's not like you had this you know long-term desire to try something like this and you just finally had the opportunity is it, it just happened yeah okay yeah totally did, did that m- seemed to be the quickest way to me to do something different was just to put down the main instrument not worry about like who's the backing band so to speak uh-huh. and it was like i feel like the toronto music community was kind of like the de facto sort of backing band on this record because okay. i mean even just like for example like this is just an example but like or two examples actually one is like you know I want to do a song that is just marimba and vocals and it's like okay like the co-producer chris stringer Mm -hmm. um and i sat down and said okay who do we know or who can we find like in toronto that's a marimba player and i don't know if you've like seen a marimba in action but it's it's like a big instrument takes up a whole room yeah um so this guy michael davidson came in and set up the marimba and we just sort of i had some ideas he was kind of riffing on some stuff and it was like you know, it was a really awesome part of the process to just kind of do that, you know, just to see that to be in the room and to just be like working in a different way where it's not like you're trying to work out a guitar part or a solo. It's like you're just like he's got this full full marimba and he's like running back and forth, you know, in the room huh. kind of working out parts and we're layering up stuff. And then he gets out his bow and he's starting to bow the keys and it's like takes on this whole other life form. And it was like I, it got me really excited again about, you know about about um you know the process of the music i guess you so. mentioned you have a, a crew that's been relatively tight for some time different members uh have come and gone mm-hmm. michael was a stranger yeah what's that like you've got a, you bring a stranger into your recording session which you know i mean i think recording sessions have their own vibe yeah and <laughs> depending on the circumstance uh there can be pressure time pressure tension to trust a stranger to come in and set up this massive thing, where does that impulse come from? Is that is that a social thing for you almost, like to to bring uh, someone in who's a specialist and, and maybe get to know them and, and figure that out? I wouldn't really say it was a social thing. It was just a really great musical thing. I see. It was awesome. It was so, it was like, it was great. I, I, I mean, wish we it, had more, I wish there was more. <laughs> I wish we could have done it more. We just had one day, we but had you, a day. You, you've employed a instrumentation that is usually external to Great Lakes Swimmers. I assume a lot of these people were strangers, maybe. Uh, some, and some yeah. were people that we have worked with before. Like the other example I was going to use is uh, uh, Drew Drecka, who did the woodwind arrangement on the first track on the Talking Wind. And it was like, this is a song about the wind, and I want to do an arrangement that is just woodwinds and vocals yeah you know and like so it's like the I, there was a lot of moments where i wanted like the instrumentation to really reinforce what was happening in the song and like that one most dramatically i think and uh and so he you know we worked on it together a little bit but he put together this amazing arrangement and got some players that he works with as a as a regular session player and as a you know as just a, a, a musical sort of genius you know in right. toronto right um and kind of put this together and i and i was really i mean I, I I really can't express how happy I was with how it turned out. 
like it was exactly what I was hoping for. That's awesome. No, yeah. that's, that's great. I, I guess I, I ask because I think if people have only heard your records, uh, they might think of you as an introspective person, maybe um, maybe a shy person. I don't know. I mean, mm-hmm. the, the, the delivery, the attack, is it has a gentleness to it. Even when you uh, are digging into some of the heavy subject matter on a record like this, so mm. well, I ask, I know you, and I know that uh, you know you like to laugh and have fun and all those things. I'm not saying you're some morose, brooding artist or nothing, but I mean, I ask about the social aspect because I imagine, also as a as a hard touring artist, I mean, I feel like you really want to connect with people, uh, as as a musician, as an artist. Yeah, I I don't know. That's a that's a good one. That's a good kind of point. You know. Um, is I the first part correct? Are you kind of shy? Are you a bit introspective? I I I feel very introverted by nature. Introverted, I should yeah, say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Introspective, I guess too. But I, I I don't think that my I think my scope is maybe is 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 not just that. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't think <laughs> it's just but, that. But yeah. I, I think it's an aspect of you that I've long observed and admired. I mean, from the moment you and I met in Guelph, uh, we were talking like everything was fine. You were you were very. Um, engaged and engaging and I didn't I didn't think of you that way but I do, I do think for someone who hasn't heard you in an interview context or had a conversation with you just listening to the record you might be like whoa this guy seems heavy and dark and I don't know yeah. I bet some people are like I don't know if I'd want to talk to Tony <laughs> cuz he's got stuff going on there Yeah like, fair enough yeah. yeah so I just wonder yeah. I know that's I know there's a huge massive social aspect to you 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 have a community of people you rely on um, yeah, I mean, my, I don't. When was the last time we actually talked, Vish? Was it like? I think was it was at your house. Ha- I mean, uh, for an interview. Yeah, uh, it was at your house in yeah. Toronto at the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think off of um, yeah, some like in uh, Parkside or something. I can't remember yeah. where we were. And uh, yeah, it was a few years ago. I don't know. It must maybe the last record or second last record. Yeah, or something it could, like that. could be. Yeah, yeah, it was a while ago. Yeah. 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 Why do you I ask? Just, well, I just mean like I. I feel like probably since the last time I've talked to you, there's been a lot of changes in my life too, like having kids yes. and kind of like all of that stuff too. And there was just like, I think that like I've just got undergone like a very big kind of change in perspective since then, you know. Since having children of your own? Yeah. And and I think that obviously it's a big change for everybody and that yeah. it's not it's not something I really want to get into, but it was part of like a bigger change for me. You, you know. don't want to get into it, but you bring it up. That's yeah, fascinating. No, no, no. I mean, I mean, I just don't want to be like, this is a song I wrote about my kids or something like that. But it's not like that at all. But it's because it's not. But I mean, I just mean that like it's informed my perspective. It changes the way you see things. It changes the way you see the world. I hear um, your. I yeah. hear a guy who has kids on your record. Yeah. I hear it all over the place. I yeah. hear you watching people sleep. Uh, yeah. I hear you. I mean, you or the narrative voice. I I hear yeah. things here, um, where in a certain light even this song in certain like there's something about my hands they belong to you or whatever it mm-hmm. is and i viewed that as my i've changed as well mm-hmm. hopefully for the better yeah. for the most part and i'm hearing and seeing things differently as well so maybe 10 years ago i wouldn't think twice about a lyric like that the familial line and if, mm-hmm. if i'm wrong about that one or whatever that's my interpretation if you think no, that's not where I was going from. Feel free to call me on it. But I, I see things maybe that aren't there <laughs> or weren't the intent, and it's because I'm, I'm a parent. And, um, and you're saying you had that changed you. You don't really want to get into it. But I am curious in terms of, if you don't mind, does it change your artistic motivations? Does it, t- does it change your artistic uh, perspective? Uh, well, I, 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 I guess what I'm saying is, is that like, you know, I'm, 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 I like being at home now. Like that's more of like, <laughs> sure. that's like, that's not like, you know what I mean? I think, I think early on, especially when the band started out, it's kind of like, it was, it was a bit more of an adventure, you know, to be out on the road and to kind of like be experiencing new places and yeah. kind of like, you know, meeting all kinds of people all the time. And it was great. But now I'm, I think that, you know, my I'm I'm sort of like you know it's it's become a lot more difficult to do that yeah you know to want to do it and to want to do it yeah. and to and to just it becomes harder to leave you know um and so I guess I guess just in that way you know I I just feel like I, I'm kind of like I'm, I'm I feel my zone my zone that I want to be in now is more of like a family zone you know six weeks of consistent touring is yeah. uh i i could not do that uh yeah. anymore not that anyone's asking me to but like this notion of 
being away for that long. Like I'm turning down trips left and right now, whereas even a few years ago, before my daughter, I, I when we last spoke, I, I surely would have had my son uh, yeah. already. And then subsequent to that, I believe uh, my daughter is going to be uh, four soon. So I, I think we spoke around that, maybe when just when she was about to be born or something. Anyway, um, yeah, I don't want to leave my wife alone with these monsters for one <laughs> thing. And, uh, and the other side of it is, yeah, I want to be around. Um, mm-hmm. And I've made, I think, uh, certain decisions in my life to ensure that I can be home mm-hmm. um, to be with them and to pick them up after school. And, uh, and that's, that's just part of, that's what I'm, that's a change for mm-hmm. me. And I assume you're, but six weeks. So you're away for six mm-hmm. weeks. What's that like as a dad, as a, as a partner? What do you, how's that? How was that for you? Well, it's easier than it, and than it was when, you know, like even like 10 years ago when I didn't even have a cell phone or a computer. Right. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. So it was like, and there was, you know, there was just, it was like, it was literally like pay phones, you know, and that was the way. Oh to, yeah. You got the uh, video you, audio interfaces now yeah, and things. Yeah. It's yeah. a lot easier yeah. to kind of be in touch now. How and many kids do you have? I have one and, and one on the way. Oh, actually. congratulations. Yeah, I thanks. did not know that. Yeah. We have not talked in a while. That's what I'm saying. That's <laughs> like, and she's four, she's already in school too. So it's kind of like, wow. Yeah. So it's, that's what I'm saying. It has been a while. It has so, been a while. So, yeah. I mean, that's a weird, that's a strange that you have a relationship with the world and that, um, you don't want to see it as much anymore. That's, that's fascinating. Well, I just, I think the focus for me is like, it's, it's kind of like gone from being the, you know, out, outward to inward maybe, you know? And I, I, I just think that there's other, oh. I, I think that there's more, almost maybe there's a, a spiritual aspect to like what I want to focus on hmm. next. And I think it's starting to reveal itself in this, in this album, maybe um, more so than in the past even, but I think that it has been there in the past, but I just think it's there's, there's just this sort of, a different sort of consciousness to me that has kind of like come about and I'm still trying to identify what that is. You don't know. I don't really know. I'm trying to figure it out though. I I tried to do a a very uh, rudimentary reading of some themes on the record. I do have a sense that uh, the future is on your mind. Yeah. What it's going to look like, what it's going to be, which um, sometimes when you have kids and you're in the midst of it, you don't, I can't even think about a week ahead because everything just seems... Yeah, in the moment, but then you get a, a news flash or something on your. Do you have a smartphone now? I do. Yeah. Yeah. So I get yeah. a thing on my phone <laughs> from the BBC News or the New York Times saying, "Calamity!" Like, ah, scientists, it's uh, not good. Yeah. The news for the next few decades, nah. And then you're like, oh, uh huh. And but then I, uh, for a moment anyway, I'm just like, ah, well, that's not good. But then I think about my kids. I'm like, oh, that's that's actually really bad. Yeah. And so I. It's on my mind more, um, and and that's not good for anxiety levels or, or anything yeah. else. But I feel like some of that, and I don't mean to go back to the water imagery or allude to your band name, but there's stuff like that is swimming around on this record, right? Mm-hmm. Contemplating what kind of world we might be leaving behind for our kids. Mm-hmm. That's there? I th- I think so. Yeah, I think it's that whole kind of like past future thing too, maybe mm-hmm. on a larger level. For sure. Do you think about your parents a lot more than now that you have kids? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think I do. I can certainly appreciate, you know, the the sort of the the uh, the struggle. I guess. Yeah. You know, like I can definitely like my like they had. I, I'm one of four. You have, oh my! I didn't know that. Yeah. Wow. So I'm I'm like the oldest of four. Grew up in a very small town in a farm. Never thought that the arts would ever be like a, a kind of like an even an option for me. You know what I okay. mean? Like I I I grew up in a very rural place and yeah so you appreciate them more but are you i'm having a thing where i'm starting to realize the time is moving and i'm in the middle of it a little bit more i'm mm-hmm. starting to realize that you know my kids are growing older my parents are growing older my sister's getting older everyone's getting older and it's more on my mind than mm-hmm. i would like it to be i used to just skate through life <laughs> live in life doing my stuff yeah. And now your body starts to remind you of, uh, actually, you should probably take a second to pay attention to that thing. And you're like, oh, crap. And I'm just, I'm 40, and that's what's going to happen now. Yeah. I got to think about that stuff every once in a while. Still trying to do the skating through life thing. Yeah. But are you encountering <laughs> that a little bit? Like, yeah, totally. Yeah? Yeah. What's that like for you? I mean, as a guy who's on the road, is it more tiring? Are you more used to it? You probably got a nice, 
hopefully nice accommodations by this point. But does it get to you this beyond being yeah, wanting to be home? It's harder too. It's harder yeah, it's for harder. sure. Yeah. And and the big the kind of the other thing is is that like seven seven records in we don't have the opportunity to be like the the, the new young band yes. kind of either. So it's yeah. like it's kind of like works on a lot of different levels. But I don't know. I I. Uh, yeah, we do our best to kind of like like self care is really important on the road and and doing all that stuff and stretching and make sure you're breathing and eating. There's a weird know. thing where sometimes on the road you you actually live healthier because you're more conscious of being on the road. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> and finding the time to actually get to yeah. that self care can be tricky. I mean, you did you drive overnight from Indianapolis? No, we t- we took the day yesterday. Okay, yeah, okay. I, it was about ten hours or Still. something, and then yeah, it was a long drive. Yeah. Yeah, and that's just a grueling part of this situation. Now, yeah. I mean, you're 15 years into this band, um, and I think we probably covered this in past interviews, but for those who are new, maybe to Great Lakes Swimmers, can we do some kind of at least a Inception story, biographical overview? Like, do you remember where this came from? What you, Because it felt to me like you had a vision for what you wanted to do right out of the gate. I mean, from your debut record on, you, you, you had your own voice, I thought. And you had this perspective on on trying to make your recordings and songs as, as fascinating and as compelling as possible. And lots of people endeavor to do that. I don't know that everyone succeeds. Mm. Uh, I remember the last time we talked about punk rock a lot. We talked about yeah. Discord records and things like that. But but then you didn't go that route, <laughs> per no. se. So, um, yeah, anyway, I'm all over the place. But do you remember how 15 years ago how this thing kind of came off the ground? I think that it's... It's funny that you mentioned that, and just to make a quick note of that, but it's the, it was the aesthetic that drove me, you know, from that music, from like hardcore music and from like music of that era. And and it was not the aesthetic, I shouldn't say. It was like the... Um, ideology, the, maybe? Uh, yeah, totally yeah. the yeah. ideology. Yeah. yeah, that's totally it. And it was like, this music is for everybody. Pick up a guitar. You know what I mean? Do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you have to make sure you have something to say, yeah. you know, and, and, and don't be afraid of saying it. And... And, uh, you know, and that sort of that the ethic, I guess, you know, like the DIY ethic was really important to me, especially early on. And I think that carried through. And, and I think, you know, and I've, you know, I've probably said this before, too, but I, I think that like, you know, that that folk music and and sort of and hardcore music ethically aren't that far apart, you know, and it's really music for people. They could sometimes occur in the exact same living room or basement, which I always found fascinating. Yeah. Like and p- taking it right to pe- to the people, free of any infrastructure, I I, I agree with you. Yeah, and I, I see a connection as well. And I still I that ethic is still a part of me too. Yeah, and we'll play anywhere from, and we still do play anywhere from like, you know, people's living rooms and basements to Massey Hall. Yeah, you know, and that's yeah. like, and to me, it's like this, it's on the same level. Yeah, you know. Yeah, and 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 I I really appreciate that about the ethic, but. Um, yeah, I mean, we started recording the album in two thousand and one um, in this in this silo. Um, it found it took two years to kind of figure out how to release it. It was released basically as an art project, all these like handmade CDs and right, right um, uh, through like an art salon that was started by Phil Cligo and Jermaine Co called WeWork, um, and they had monthly shows, art shows, and concerts at their apartment. And it sort of grew out of that. Um, we we released the first album that way. Um, outside eventually distri- distributed, I think, initially. Yeah, um, sure. The, for the first couple albums. And then there was some interest from Network, you know, which was the irony of that being that, like, WeWork was a bit of a play on Network, which was one of the largest kind of indies in Canada for <laughs> Was it really? At the time. I didn't yeah. know that there was an actual, literally, uh, a play on Network. That's funny. I was just talking to someone that thought WeWork was part of Network oh. just because of the, you know, hmm. the the way the names were. But right. So it was just the like you know it was amazing actually that ne- that there was a, it became interest from network eventually so wow yeah and I think that they helped bring the music to a larger audience and and you know and things really started to get going for us around that time yeah. um, but it, you know initially it was conceived as a singer songwriter vehicle and it was just a way to kind of like just sort of you know distance myself from the singer songwriter thing and let the project be whatever it you know however it shaped up to be it wasn't necessarily a band on the first album it was more just like me with an acoustic guitar and singing with a few friends 
um, playing some other instruments and the live show was kind of like that too but over the years we kind of pieced together a band and then it became kind of that that kind of thing yeah you know this sort of revolving cast of people that came in and out of the band for various reasons and one of the big reasons was because we toured a lot yeah and it's hard for people when they when they have to make life decisions about like what they're doing and and it's hard to be away from home for that long and that's totally understandable but that was the big reason for a lot of people coming in and out of like the band in quotation marks so to speak you view it as still this open-ended project on some level like people can come and go Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. And people do. People do. (laughs) Yes. It's, it's a, it's a, it's a hard life on some level. Yeah. Not, not being in the Great Lakes Swimmers, being in a band and and traveling. (laughs) That's for other people to say, maybe. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) You said something there that I found fascinating about, you were kind of conscious of not being trapped by the singer songwriter imprint. You also earlier said something about, um, you know, you're not the new band anymore. Mm -hmm. You've been around a long time. Mm Mm-hmm. Do you feel hemmed in at all by being in the Great Lakes Swimmers, being the Great Lakes Swimmers? Like, do you feel like it's still something or, or people have decided what it is? And, and and even though it's always changing, like, are you conscious of that? I I really want to take, and with this re- with this new record too, it's kind of like I feel like I'm just kind of starting to touch on it, but I really want to take the take it to to interesting places from here um and really sort of like really think more deeply about like how how to make it you know an in, in a more interesting a creatively artistic project and not just like a folk rock band sure um and uh and i just i i i think i just sort of scratched the surface on this record but it was enough to really get me excited about the the, the, the project again okay because i was t- starting to get way down at the, you know and this is not now but it was you know maybe a few years ago or three or four years ago about like you know okay this is what five people can do in the room and it's like it's like guitar on every track bass on every track drums on every track and it's just kind of like it doesn't have to be that it can be can be sort of whatever you imagine it to be as, as a musical project it doesn't have to be a band playing you know in a room on a record it can be different different you know collab a series of collaborations you know or i can try to play something else other than acoustic guitar i don't know i, I just i'm that's what i'm i don't feel hemmed in by it at all and, and in some ways i'm glad that I'm 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 glad to be an established act as well right now too, especially considering the music, the musical, the climate of the the industry and all of that stuff now too. I'm glad that we were able to establish ourselves, sort of before all of these big changes that are happening in the industry right now. How are you, know? you managing those changes yourself? Just by changing things up, by by just because uh, you're kind of doing things the same way you've done them before. You're yeah. recording, you're making records. Yeah, you have a label that puts them out, and then you tour like mad. Yeah. Uh, you haven't really altered your course in terms of. I mean, there are probably other ways you have that I'm not aware of. But is it difficult? More difficult? To, you're saying it's difficult on some level. Yeah. Things have changed. Like, what are you doing to kind of go with the time, so to speak? I don't know. I don't like. <laughs> like for me, it's not really. That's not really my like area of expertise sure you know so it's not like and i rely on the people that i work with to kind of like help me figure that out but you you are i think you have going back to the the punk ideology thing that we were talking about earlier even the thing you were just saying about how this can be anything it wants to be yeah uh you are you have this independent streak uh and you have this conviction and, and trust in yourself how open are you to strange marketing and promotion ideas i mean when people come to you and they say I don't even know what they do. Can you get yeah. on Snapchat? Can you do yeah. a thing? Are you like, I don't know what that is? Or like, because you're, you're not a Luddite. You're on the Twitter and the yeah. Instagram and all that stuff. Yeah, totally. I try to keep up with that a little bit. I, I don't, I've never liked Facebook as a platform. I know that's like probably ridiculous, but I just, I've just stayed away from it. You're I've never, I've never probably quite on. wise um, these days, given the breaches and the manipulation and maybe you knew. I don't know. I maybe on a <laughs> maybe on like a kind of like a, I just didn't. It's I felt really uneasy about it. Yeah. You know when it first came out, and I was like, I don't. There's something about this I really don't like. But mm. you know, but I've just I just kind of stayed away from it because I really just didn't like it. Yeah. And, and now, you know, it is what it is, and I feel like at the same time I'm missing out on a lot of stuff. You, um, you just might be people making connections through that platform, but at the same time, I, I feel, um, you know, like we have a band page, obviously, yeah, and yeah. I don't I don't I don't have anything to do with oh, okay. it. Okay. Um, but I, I do, I do try to manage the, uh, like 
Twitter seemed a little bit more reasonable to me to handle. Also a bit of a dumpster fire now, yeah, to be honest. Totally. But yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. And Instagram, too. I've been trying a little bit, but it's really hard to keep up with that, too. <laughs> that and seems like, to be elevating. I think more people yeah. are gravitating to, towards Instagram now. Yeah, so I've been trying to keep up on that because I think the picture thing makes sense to me, too. Like a picture yeah. and a little blurb, and it's kind of like that. that's sort of more manageable. But uh, are you occasionally uh, asked Even to do something? it's owned by Facebook now. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. It has been yeah. for some time. Yeah, that's true. Are you occasionally asked to do like wacky things have you ever been asked um, to do something where you're like no nah, i can't i don't think that makes sense for us yeah i guess there's been a few things where <laughs> i'm trying to think specifically but it's like just wonder if there might be something funny just something funny yeah, in the yeah. context of like great lake swimmers doing Ugh. something kind of silly i know i have a story in my <laughs> mind somewhere i just have to I have to scroll through the that's fine through the file system i don't know okay all right it'll come to me but you, you've yeah. probably turned it down if if it if something occurs you've have you turned things down yeah yeah definitely no that's not for us yeah we can't sure. do that okay. yeah okay definitely there's a show yeah. uh that a guy has where he makes uh his guests just i don't even know if it's still happening he just makes his guest eat like increasingly spicy chicken wings Uh huh. and I, I often this is part of the show the show is just yeah. a, it's a conversation but the, throughout the course of 10-15 minutes Henry Rollins is just eating increasingly spicy they're getting spicier and spicier yeah. until he has to sort of throw in the towel and I, I try to picture people <laughs> and that's when the interview ends I think so. Yeah. I haven't made it all the way through one of those videos I don't know if they're still <laughs> going on but it's just this is the kind of stuff yeah. that people are getting asked yeah. to do now. I like, see what you're saying, maybe. It's yeah. like kind of like this kind of sensational stuff, I it's guess. It's kind of talking. Yeah. Or, like, I, I have my, um, uh, I don't know, I have my various complexes of the, about the show that I do, which is a relatively natural, relatively earnest, in-the-moment conversation show. But everyone else, and, and some people have shows like that, of course, but a lot of people are like, hey, you got a new record out. Can you tell us your favorite cooking book or cookbook or something? Mm-hmm. And, and you're like, well, that doesn't really have anything to do mm-hmm. with the thing. They're just trying to find a way to, which is this weird acknowledgement that maybe, the, as you say, the music industry is changing. No one knows how to value music quite properly. They want to mm-hmm. get involved in it. Mm-hmm. They want to ask Jeff Tweedy about his book, but they want him to just talk about something else other yeah. than his than work. Thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, I, and, yeah. I, and so I wonder, some, I mean, we, you know, we've talked about all sorts of things already. But I, I sometimes, like, I try to listen hard and, and, and ask about the things as best I can with the time I have, and mm-hmm. and the guests seem appreciative. But th- you must be in these positions sometimes where they're like, can you sit in a dunk tank? Yeah. And uh, someone will just whip your CD at the thing, and then you get to fall, and yeah. then the winner gets a trip for two to <laughs> Club Med or something. And you're like, well, yeah. what does this really have to do yeah. with my practice other than I'm sort of involved? I've been pretty okay with <laughs> with, like being okay with like walking away from a situation (laughs) if you know if called for okay and i have no problem with that and i think one of the and you know back to kind of like our record label too yeah and i think that they you know have never sort of interjected creatively yeah with anything you know i'm kind of i'm pretty proud of that fact that like we've been just making the music that we really want to make all of this time and they've been supportive of that yeah. you know and they've been they've been helpful in kind of helping us develop that on you know on a on a on that side of things but not on a not in a creative way right. you know so yeah. it's like i'm fully prepared to, to you know to walk away from any sort of situation that impedes on on that sort of full thing so yeah, yeah. there's been no dunk tanks no <laughs> there's been no I, I, you know, my, my examples weren't great of, of well, such things but yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah but I kind of see what you mean I, I'm just I'm, I'm I guess I'm pretty proud that we haven't had to do anything like that and, well I just mean yeah. you invest so much I know you uh, and I know you invest so much thought and energy into these records yeah so then the promotion stuff starts and that's where things can kind of go sideways I think because yeah maybe I, yeah. I, I frequently hear uh, from people and this is not to toot my own horn People will, will often say, well, thanks for actually reading the book yeah. or listening to the thing. I'm like, well, what are other people doing? They're like, they just, they don't. I'm like, yeah. oh, because, I mean, you talk about the music industry, and, and I know it's hard for people like me, uh, music journalists, uh, these days, too. Like, we're, mm. because the the thing's crumbling, so the, the, every aspect of it is, and 
That's all. I this know. is a good p- moment for me to interject, actually, that I absolutely love your show <laughs> and I love what you're doing. Thank you. And it should be compiled in kind of like We Owe You Nothing, the Punk Planet Collected right, Interviews said, kind yeah. of thing. It's it's totally, this is such a, a wonderful archive of, of music that I, I, I just can't say. I'm, I'm very honored to be on this show oh, right now. Oh, geez, Tony. Uh, I, I didn't I'm mean such to, a big fan. But I, I just, I thought this was a good time to interject that because I think you're doing such a great job and oh, I love your show. Well, thank you, Tony. Yeah. And I think you've, you've expressed this to me in the past as well and yeah. I, I didn't mean to go this route but I just no. know you're a guy that thinks about things and you put it in your songs and I just wonder if you I, when I ask about you know are you worried about being hemmed in blah 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 I just wonder if you feel like sometimes uh, the reception to your work is is taken as um, I don't know I don't mean seriously but just mm-hmm. like you know I mean it's it's weird mm-hmm. out here everyone's putting out stuff and it's really hard to know if it's getting through to people yeah resonating yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah and I think that it is I think that I feel the response has been pretty good for this record, you know, the the newest record so far. Um, and uh, I think it's getting through to people, but it's hard to know. I want to, I, I appreciate that. And I mean, the record's sort of still young in its own way. Um, and it takes a while to process such things. So I, I hope it is. I mean, I hope it's, it, it, I hope it just it didn't, you know, I hope it wasn't done the week after it was released. You yeah. Know, yeah. Because you know, it seems to be the way things are right now. Yeah. Get it up um, on something right away. And, yeah. Yeah. This is going to be a, it's almost a cliche question. I don't want to let go of the fact that this milestone has been achieved, 15 years of Great Lakes Swimmers. And and I know this is going to be a difficult question to answer, and I'm, I'm ramping it up right now so that, uh, I don't know why, just to make it more dramatic. But you are someone who started with a particular outlook on your field, maybe, um, what you were getting into, what you wanted to be known as we're at a point now with this latest record where you've flipped the script a little bit you've changed things up I am curious if you can sort of summarize to the best of your ability what you've learned about yourself throughout the course of of this band and making the music you make and and the songs you've written and um, maybe just your approach to things have you because you, you end mm. up with a sense of self when you're creating things and expressing things on some level if you're if you're self-aware. I just wonder, do you do you have that in a nutshell? Do you have a sense of of where you were, where you've where you are now and and what that says about you and where this band has taken you as a person? Yeah, that's that's a really interesting question. <laughs> it's a big one and yeah. I, I that's why I ramped it up because yeah. I, I don't expect a fully coherent thing, but I assume uh, at some point when you're thinking about things if you are that this might occur to you like i i think that at a a certain point yeah uh, let me try to answer this yeah Yeah. but like i i think that at a certain point i realized that like this is what i do like this is my that was kind of like an important thing to just know it wasn't like you know this is like you know like uh at at a certain point it's like what i do is i i really think about things and i feel like i have something to say and and I feel like I've been given this platform to say them, and and I and I, and I feel responsible, you know, for that. I feel responsible, and I and I think that it's important to, to to to, you know, pre- present that in the best way that I know how to do that, mm-hmm. um, and uh, and that's that's musically and that's lyrically and and all of that stuff. Um, uh, the, the sort of the larger role, you know, is is sort of. Um, maybe reflecting on things that people don't always have the time to reflect on, yep. you know, because we all have very busy lives, but someone has to take a step back and try to look at things and say, you know, this is how I see things. This is how th- uh, things could be. Maybe this is how things were. Um, maybe this is how things are. Um, and, uh, and sort of reflect on some of the, the, the sort of the extremes of life, the beautiful things and the, the painful things and uh and sort of process them uh, and and that's something that um that people who do this sort of give to the rest of the us you know like we 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 give that to we to each other you know um as artists and, and as musicians and creative people and in the arts in general not just music but um it's a very important role you know yeah. and and i think it's something that i've discovered the importance of as i've gone you know and come into kind of like a, a more deep consciousness about that over time, about not just my role, but m- my role in the larger, 
scheme of things yeah. too, you know, amongst other people that are doing this kind of thing as well. There's a song mm -hmm. on this new album called The Real Work. Mm -hmm. Is there any chance anything you just said speaks to that song? With There's lines like, it's never done, uh, you know, there's no result, there's no losing, there's no winning, it's just the work. Yeah. I don't know where that song came from, but I, I can't help it. it. It just, what you were saying made me think of it. Yeah, part of that, like, that's like, that one, you know, that song, when I was finished with it, when I was finished writing with it, it still needed a few little tweaks here and there. But I just had a moment with that song where I was kind of like, all right, I think, you know, it's like I felt sad a little bit <laughs> when it was done. I don't know. I just had this moment with that one. But I think, you know. That's interesting because I think of it as a song about perseverance. Yeah, potentially, yeah. But what I, what I really, you know, part, part of what that song is about is that there's a lot of work that I think just goes unrecognized. And it's like that's the, that's the important stuff. Yeah. It's the the work that gets recognized isn't always the most important work. It's the it's all of the little things that we do, the the care that people take with each other, and and sort of the uh, the uh, uh, the reaching out you know yeah. that people do to each other that doesn't have there's no platform for that. But that's the real that's the most important work. You know. Well, I mean, for what it's worth, I I I think it's a wonderful record, and and um, I don't want to say it's. Uh, potentially your best record <laughs> but I, I appreciate that you feel like this is a, a very uh, different and and very true expression of where you want to take this band mm -hmm. and um i just don't want to shortchange anything you've done and, and make some blanket statements seven records in i have my favorites this one i'm still trying to penetrate on some level there's just some stuff here that i'm still processing uh, but i like i say i know it means a lot to you and it means a lot to me, and I'm still trying to figure it out, which is, yeah, I, I think, a testament to a great record, frankly. Yeah, well, me too. But, yeah. I mean, I'm still trying to figure it out, too. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so what's sort of next for you at this point? I know you just got back from six weeks on the road. We're speaking uh, ostensibly because you will be playing Guelph on, on the 22nd of November. Yep. Um, and uh, more shows throughout the rest of the year? Yeah, uh, we're playing in Guelph, we're playing in Toronto, we're playing in London, we're playing in the church where we recorded the album in London, okay. Ontario. Yeah. Uh, and then we are going overseas after oh, okay. that for about three weeks and we're doing a full European tour, a Europe-UK tour. Okay. Which, um, yeah, so that's kind of like the last part of this initial sort of, you know, touring component for the new album. We'll sure. be taking it overseas and, and we'll be there basically up until Christmas. Um, and then probably summer stuff? If, if possible, uh, yeah, I think next year we'll be doing yeah. stuff. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. 2019. Yeah, yeah. and and we're we're already starting to talk about dates for the spring. There's a lot of places that we didn't get to uh, mm. also on this tour. Um, so we're we're already talking about more tour dates uh, in the spring as well. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know. There's a lot of really good energy in this record, I think, and that's fueling me as well. Yeah, like it's 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 really allowing me. Like I don't feel I don't feel like oh we just did six weeks in the U.S. and I feel terrible and I want to <laughs> collapse. It's like I I just don't feel that way. I feel good about it. What? I feel like we reached people and I feel it's it's been it's been uh, the opposite of draining. It's been it's been fulfilling in, yeah. in a lot of ways. You yeah. alluded to the fact that you already have a some kind of at least mental vision of where you'd want to go next in terms of songs or recordings. Is that I mean you you're just touring right now, but do yeah. you have a plan? Do you have an idea of what you want to do? Yeah, I think I think so. I, I mean, I, the most important thing to me is kind of getting into the writing, though. That's the heavy lifting for me is that. And then we can kind of figure out a, like a, a sort of a scenario for like recording. OK, that'll, that'll be fun and interesting. And I, I'm not quite there yet. OK, but, but yeah, it's it's all sort of germinating now. And I'm I'm I'm, I'm pretty um, like, I don't know, like I stoked is exactly the right word but it's like not in the colloquial sense it's like i i i, I do feel truly like you know in, enlivened uh if that that's a word right enlivened. yeah yeah psyched do you feel psyched, psyched? i feel psyched <laughs> i feel stoked <laughs> stoked we gotta go back to the 80s stoked yeah. is more now i think psyched okay. is more maybe okay. the 80s you're excited yeah 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 totally um and it's been a really good flow so far with this with these you know with this group of songs so I'm 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 very much still on on a on a very good plane I think to kind of to even go further out there. Nice. Yeah. That's great to hear. So uh, uh for more information about your band where should people go? Yeah. 
Uh, we talked about the internet a little bit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, we got a website, yeah. greatlakeswimmers.com. Um, we are on Facebook, even though I have nothing to do with it. It's Great Lake Swimmers mm-hmm. on Facebook. We have the Twitter. We have the Instagram. Um, are, there, s- are there different? Is it Great Lake Swim on something? On Twitter, it's Great Lake Swim. Great Lake Swim. Yeah. But yeah. Instagram, it's... Instagram, it's great underscore lake <laughs> underscore swimmers. This is what yeah. I have to make people say on the show. They have to spell things out. Okay. Yeah. All right. And uh, and we are on, on all the, the streaming platforms too, right. like Spotify. And, uh, you know, if that's how you get music, then I encourage you to check it out there as well. But the, your records are available on vinyl. You put out a vinyl box set. Uh, how many years ago did that come out? I think that was out in, I think it was 20, it was last year, I think. Oh, it last came year. Out. Okay. Yeah. Paper bag records reissued the first three albums on right. vinyl, which were out of print for quite some time. So that's interesting. The paper bag records, like, yeah. Were you on that label? I can't even remember. Um, no, we did. <laughs> interestingly, we did that. Uh, we did their children's compilation. See you on the moon. Yeah, see you on the moon was a paper bag records release that comp that compilation. So, oh, they, they, did they, they just get into vinyl re- like uh, reissues or something? They started like a, a a sort of a vintage imprint. Oh, okay. And again, I, I think that ten years is potentially a bit dubious to call something vintage no but, yeah that's f- yes that's fair yeah. but they they came up with like a vinyl because i think they did the deers as well yeah, they did a they couple did other the box sets yeah they, they released an art bergman record too which i was really happy to see yeah happen. yeah um but yeah so they released records one two three in a box and then a fourth disc of of just ex- material exclusive to the box which oh, was nice. like demos and outtakes from that time period okay. from 2001 to 2007 cool so, so that's yeah. out and and then the new record and they're available on vinyl is my point and uh, yep. people want in that way as well yeah okay is there a song uh from uh, the waves the wake that you could choose for us to go out on right now so uh it's always a big question yeah i would pick th- since we talked about the real work i would i would like to go out on that one okay we yeah. talked about it so i feel like we've contextualized it on, or did we i mean i kind of gave you my reading of it do you want to say anything more yeah. about it no i think i think i think i said what i needed to say about that <laughs> yeah okay yeah. this is the the real work by great lake swimmers uh tony um you know i really love that you came back on the show and i, I appreciate uh your work and 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 your I just appreciate you. I thank yeah, you for thank doing you, this and being on this show and best of luck with everything. The feeling is mutual. Thank you for having me. Yeah. my eyes and stuns my senses The outside world flows through these fences They let out more than they take in They bleed me out and I can't staunch them My mouth lets out more than it takes in It leads me out and I can't help it It is nothing but a muscle flexed A swirling sea of now and next Upside down, inside out, this whole time Going the wrong way North was inverted The directions, the plan got me turned around I was on the right path But couldn't feel the ground
started the test, retracing all the steps. When was the first strike? Which dances were learned in an ever changing suit, retailored with patches of a life blind and careless, popping stitches on. Very, very special thanks to Tony Decker of Great Lakes Swimmers for being on this, the 443rd episode of Creative Control, which is part of the Entertainment One Podcast Network and is available on all iOS and Android platforms and also on things like Spotify and YouTube and Audio Boom as well. Interestingly, if you're listening to the show sequentially, the, the last guest was Sam Precop of The Sea and Cake, now Tony Decker of The Great Lake Swimmers. A lot of water. It's just a lot of water. I guess we should all get used to it since the world is going to be full of we're all going to be too bleak to talk about the climate change maybe i won't continue anyway if you can't find an episode that you're looking for on any of those aforementioned platforms or if you want to learn more about me and sign up for my regularly scheduled newsletter please visit my website vishkana.com you can like creative control on facebook follow us on twitter at vish creative or follow me at vishkana listen to a radio show version of creative control on wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time around the world at CFRU.ca or on an actual radio at 93.3 FM if you're in or near Guelph. Also, visit patreon.com slash creative control to make a flexible monthly donation to keep this podcast humming along. You can pledge whatever you like and cancel anytime. I shouldn't even mention the cancel. You know what? Canceling's not an option. You pledge, that's it. For life. In all seriousness, you can make monthly flexible pledges of whatever dollar amount you like five dollars one dollar a month five dollars a month twenty dollars a month whatever it is it's up to you and you can change it whenever you like but please do consider going to patreon.com slash creative control if i can send you a creative control t-shirt in return for your generosity just send me a note and i will do that i will send it to you right away okay okay thanks again to the in-kind support i receive for this show, from the likes of Pizza Trocadero, The Bookshelf, Planet Bean Coffee, CFRU 93.3 FM, Granddad's Donuts, and uh, and that's pretty much it. Oh, my friend Jim Guthrie, he lets me use the instrumental version of his song, The Rest Is Yet to Come, to end the show each week. And uh, that means a lot to me. Visit jimguthrie.org for more info about Jim. And finally, thank you. Thank you for listening to this show and subscribing to this podcast and uh, telling your friends about the show and maybe suggesting they do the same. 
because it's a, a labor of love and uh, and we, we should all share the love before the water levels rise and we're dead. All right, I got to go. Talk to you hopefully soon. Bye for now. <laughs>